Hey there folks, Rinian T here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. In the last part, we wrapped up the 6.4 story by facing off with the Golbez. And now it's time to finish up Pandemonium. We already have Fortuna being like, hey, don't forget that there's a whole situation with Pandemonium going on. But we didn't forget. We're, we're doing it. We just we went after we do the story. Gosh. Neither of souls. Ah, oh, Arya, I had a feeling would arrive soon. Urgent tidings always seem to carry you in their wake, after all, and Master Fortuno recently sent word regarding his investigation. Nancy's uncovered information regarding Professor Claudian's whereabouts and the sudden appearance of Pandemonium in the Ethereal Sea. We do well to meet with him at once. With no objections to Asti, proceed to the Aisha Scope forthwith. We shall make the necessary arrangements and join you shortly. Faster to take a lift, or is it be faster for me to fly? I think it'd be faster for me to fly over. Because then I'd have to get back on the mount, right? Maybe. I think it's, it might be even, but this is the funnier way. And you could take the lift, or you could not take the lift. Could, uh, be bound to the ground in a moment because. You cannot fly any further. Jerks! Okay, I really should at least get Labyrinth those movement speed. Oh, it's not gonna matter after this, but oh my gosh. Um, in glare, because... Otherwise you just hear the blinds in the background. I apologize for that one part where there was like just the blinds blowing in the wind. Smack against the window pane. <sighs> I really need to get my uh, movement speeds on mounts in these areas. Alright, proceed to the Aisha scope. And... I thank you for answering my summons with haste. Uh, yeah, haste. Let's forgo formalities and jump straight to the heart of the matter. Namely, the whereabouts of Professor Claudia, who has not been seen since his ill-advised journey to Aziz Law. A subsequent expedition that discovered an airship in the vicinity of the Ethereal Chemical Research Facility. Although the vessel clearly belonged to Professor, he was nowhere to be found. There were signs that someone, perhaps the man himself, had forced their way into the facility, so his trail was duly followed. However, the trail led nowhere, in a literal sense. It was almost as if an entire sector of the facility had been wrested from existence. Further investigation confirmed the expedition party's suspicions. Nigh on an entire sector of Aziz Law has been teleported elsewhere. Teleported? To where? We believe this destination was none other than the Ethereal Sea. Here where here were its elegant facilities reconstituted as the halls of pandemonium to great success as you can see. So that means Professor Claudian is in there in that monstrous fortress? our leading theory. We are certain enough, at least, to risk sending you into its depths to in search of the missing man. Yet before we do, there is another pressing matter. While Pandemonium may appear firmly sealed, an unknown entity was recently spied crawling forth from its gates. 
We observed this behavior with the isoscope, and to our horror, witnessed it gorging upon the surrounding ether like a ravenous beast. What? It must be stopped. The ethereal sea harbors the souls of the departed, to the wellspring from which all creatures are born. If its flow were disrupted, life itself might cease to be. Precisely. Safety must be our first priority. Were this of this menace, Arya, then we will be at the liberty to investigate what wicked machinations are afoot. This memory crystal was recovered from Claudian's airship. Take it with you. It may yet provide some insight into the enigma of pandemonium. Without Temis, there will be no army of phantom warriors. I realize you are more than capable in combat, but are you certain you'll be alright? Uh, yeah, I I'll be... <laughs> I'll be fine. Temis isn't the only one who could summon our illusory allies. Don't you worry about that. I, I got this. I'll be fine. He, he isn't. Why, of course. I should have known some of your talents would master even the ancient arcade arts. Apologies for my failure of imagination. Once we are freed of the looming specter of pandemonium, you must promise to share your knowledge, for the sake of thorough reports, of course. In the meantime, while I shall focus my efforts on providing you with what information and support I can, I shall gather researchers from the confluence to construct a means to convey you to your destination. The rest is in your hands. Bossius, the ninth circle is now accessible. Or what the heck? 
Oh, other healer disconnected. What the heck? I was doing roulette the other day, and there was a yeah. Oh, I was not paying attention to what I was doing. Um, who also kept disconnecting? going on. Are the surface just being that bad? I don't know. I think Ravening's a generic AoE. All right. Oh no. Ravening is him switching to the next four. This is a Marshallist, so we need to pay attention to what he is doing. All right. So this is a knockback. That was cool. That was supposed to be healer stacks, by the way, because other healers disconnected. Okay, summoner needs to sprays. This is a a mess because of this whole nonsense with the other people. Yeah, I'm lost to what I'm doing. Ah! Alright, rear combination, get to the front. Well, that's a sign. Alright, he switches to maybe a slightly nicer section. Maybe. Why are you camping me? This is gonna be terrible. Okay, I'm gonna have it actually some my focus because of this whole mess with the healer disconnecting. Dual tank busters, and it's a tether. Buster. And then there's an out for everyone else. And Amen. And Ecliptic Meteor! I'm gonna be near. I'm gonna be near. We're straight up time. Oh, right! I forgot he like speeds it up right there. Not used to being melee. This is a mess. This is a mess. Oh no. Okay, ravening. He's just swapping. This is fine. This poor healer. Alright, we're back to mage. We're gonna see more mechanics than I was expecting, I'll be honest. I was not expecting to see mechanics in this fight as many. Alright. Semi. Oh, I did that again. We're back to ice and fire. Uh, you wanna be not near the one he shows. It's gonna be one, two. So, this time he's gonna be doing ice. Like a fire scythe that was not gonna spread. Alright, and we're back into dual spell. Out. Give them their little corner to be safe. Okay, this is fine. Oh my gosh, the other healer is back! And they have sounds in their macros. Help! The 
the other healer is back. Okay, I can actually start maybe doing stuff here. Um, okay, so the knockback. I'm just finding the spot that has no middles. Front combination, get behind. It's also out. I'm not used to seeing this side of the mechanics anymore. <laughs> oh gosh, it's fine. It's fine. Maybe. Uh, tank cluster, something. Walking over to the Kibas here soon. Alright? Yeah, we're swapping over to the Kibas. Of course, we don't get Limit Break because of the whole mess with the healer. Alright, comment! Let's not read it this time. Okay, it flipped the key meteor. Okay. I did not read it! Okay, someone else hit it. I lost my butt. I lost my uh, mouse there. That was a mess. Great start to last year of pandemonium, y'all. greeted once and it did not pay off. Impressive work, Arya. Their memories of your tenacity were not embellished in the slightest. Do not be alarmed. A proper introduction shall set your mind at ease. I am Athena. Key Chief Keyword of Pandemonium, wife of Taloha Brea, and mother to Eric Tonios. It is I who made Pandemonium anew in the underworld. My mother is speaking. I am the source of all your recent troubles. I must say, I did not imagine I would meet you in this age. A slight miscalculation, perhaps a fortunate one, for your deeds in the past have left quite an impression on me. I understand you have to reason to be wary, but I assure you there is no need. I know not what La Habrea has told you of me, but all that I have done, I have done out of sincere scientific curiosity. That appetite yet remains even after my rebirth. Conflict is the furthest thing from my mind. I ask that you at least hear me out before brandishing your weapon. Give Claudia back. Claudia? Ah, oh, you must be referring to the man who set foot in, foot in Aziz's law. He is now indispensable to my work. Were he not, for I treat all my tools with care, especially those with which I will grasp godhood. You are as stubborn as, as La Habrea, I see. Although I speak in earnest, you refuse to hear the meaning of my words. Perhaps you would be better served by a different teacher.
Luckily, you already possess the tools I require to make one for you. Yes, that crystal teems with memories. Memories of two souls you know quite well. La Habrea and Erectonios. I shall stitch them into the fabric of two errant souls, that with their help you may come to see clearly. You, how, where are we? Surely these two have much to tell you of me, and I would have you listen. Perhaps then you shall better understand me, my desire for godhood. There is another, but their soul has proven difficult to work with. However, with these memories, I may very well manage to weave together something presentable. You have a place in my plans. I do hope that in time you come to realize that cooperation is the best path forward. I have little understanding of where we are, yet somehow I am unsurprised to find you here. At present, I have more questions than answers. Perhaps you can help me address this inequity? Is there somewhere we can speak without fear of interruption? I don't know how long it's been, Arya, but it's good to see, as ever to see your face. Would they were under more conventional circumstances? Just where are we? And what events have led to this unexpected reunion? Ah, yes. I remember you telling us about this memory crystal. I think that it contains our memories. This is a lot to take in, not least of all the fact that you all hail from the future. I searched for you after a time but could find no trace. Now I know why. had its share of surprises, if my memories are relieved. The supposedly world-ending final, final days came upon us, yet here we are in a future where you, at least, exist. Do we overcome the over despair that falls us? Do we find a way to live on? Questions without simple answers, it seems. So let's take heart that life endured in some form. As but memories, we may never have the luxury of a larger picture. Regardless, now that it has come to pass, this future must be protected from Athena's scheming. Let this conviction guide our every action. Agreed. But as memories give in fleeting form, we are bereft of any physical or magical talents. We cannot aid Arya in battle. Nay, Athena meant us to speak, and nothing more. But though we may be tools, we need not be slaves to her whims. We will tear ourselves from her grasp and shatter her ambitions. I must wonder how she knew of our history with Arya. Likely, she possessed some means by which to observe events within Pandemonium, either while they were occurring or after the fact. 
Regardless, her knowledge far exceeds our own. A shortcoming we must remedy at once. We would do well to learn more of the pandemonium now dominating the landscape of souls. Arya's colleagues will doubtless prove to be of value in that respect. companions hesitate to approach. We may be unusual visitors, but time is of the essence. Bring them here. Although you may be but a confluence of memory, it is an honor to meet the personage at personages I have read of in our I've only read of an Arya's report. Blah, blah, blah. As a researcher, this is beyond exciting, but I admit to no small measure of fear as well. I know what you mean. I can scarcely stop, stop my legs from shaking. We're powerless to do aught but speak. I see no reason why you should be afraid. It isn't my life I fear for. I only fear that I might not have the chance to ask you all the questions without burning a hole in my mind. We stand before two of the ancients who hold priceless knowledge beyond the ken of any of our peers. What purpose does fear serve if not to be confronted and conquered? To that end, we shall share with you our records. Perhaps together we can find the thread which will lead us safely out of this conundrum. Information shall be our most precious resource, for that is the only weapon we can wield in these forms. Memories are at your complete disposal. We can start with Athena, whose thirst for discovery would see all life consumed. Her desires haven't changed. Still, she seeks to transcend her mortal existence so that she might unravel the mysteries of life. She would become a god. <sighs> Nebulous concept, but Athena had her own ideas on what divinity entailed. In her mind, a god can create souls at will. Thus, she chose the underworld or the ethereal sea, as it is known in this age, as a staging ground for her final experiments. Here lies a practically bottomless well of ether. Even if it means stemming the flow of life itself, she intends to continue her work. She thinks of nothing else. We caught a glimpse of Athena as we came into this world. Her smile, her voice, they were just as I remember. Without even realizing it, I found myself in affection for her. Don't look at me like I've gotten mad. I'm not asking you to join her side. I know the true Eric Tonius would not- would never want that. But these emotions remain in memory, if nothing up nowhere else. Shall remain here to compile what information we can. You must infiltrate Pandemonium and seek out Athena. I would ask that you leave the memory crystal with us. We may hold secrets that which have yet to be unveiled. All that's left is the cross that menacing threshold. Shall we take a closer look? I have one question for you. Does word or a site mean aught to you? Or a site? Why, yes, there are a few records of its existence. It mainly makes appearances in Legends of Evilies, in, in tales concerning the Aussian Laha. Well, in tales concerning entity known as an Asian, this personage is associated with Black Orosite, known as the Heart of Sabi, a source of considerable power. I see. 
see the time has not buried it. Hi. From the outside, Pandemonium looks no different than it does in the past. However, there is no guarantee that the inside will be familiar. You would do well to secure the area near the entrance first. Once it has been cleared of threats, Laha, Bray, and I can approach and we shall begin our exploration of the interior. Portal should convey it to Pandemonium's gates. I hardly need to tell you to keep your weapon at the ready. Um, I never lost faith that we would meet again. I told you as much, did I not? I understand you may be confused. I was too, at first. You see, I am not the true Temis. I was made by Athena, molded from one of the many souls at her disposal. I am only an illusion built from memory, no more real than La Habrea or Erectonius. Even so, I believe I've grasped on the situation. This is the distant future. Future where Athena lives once more, although the means of her rebirth are yet beyond me. You are here to stop her, have I the right of it so far? Very good. I would be disappointed if you did not rise to her challenge. Although I am sorry to say that I cannot aid you, my creator has tampered with my essence and I'm oddly inclined to act in her interests. I can do not but offer you words of warning. We will fight and it cannot be avoided. There is no need for that pained expression. Remember, I am but an illusion. Nothing worth shedding tears over. I would feel terrible if I had to trounce a little bit again. I know not what is in your mind, but I must stress once again that I cannot defy the urge to stand against you. Athena's hold over me is unyielding. Still, I would ask that you listen carefully to the advice I offer you now. Athena has prepared a new vessel to replace Erectonios so that she may become a god. By gathering the souls readily available in this sea of ether, she tempers with her own essence. Yet the souls are faint, diffuse. She doubts whether they are sufficient to her goals, so she has turned her gaze to you. But your thin ether, you managed to lay Hephaestus low, and Athena would know the secret of your strength. To that end, she has prepared an experiment for her, op for her observation. Fight for your life against Athena's creation, and in doing so, give her the knowledge she desires. What's happening? Athena has made her move. We must find a way to reach her, or all is lost. We can do little but hope for er for Arya's success. Yeah. Hand 
pandemonium. Once a life massive lifeless stone now imbued with a soul. Dina has grown much since her death at La Habrea's hand. Though the soul she creates are imperfect, they act with absolute obedience. I know you shall cut your way through this monster as you have so many others. Then you shall come before me. Do not hesitate to do what you must, for that is the only way to stop Athena. Anabasia's The Tenth Circle is now accessible. Oh, we've got a distraction! We've got a distraction. There's an S rank up. It's currently S rank day mini because it's the second round of S ranks after payment. So, yeah. So, this is Ophion S. This is the S rank of Elpis. Kind of fitting that we're doing Pandemonium and this spawns. Elpis, but anyway, yeah, so Alphaeonius is the S rank of Elpis, spawns by discarding a stack of five eggs of Elpis. See, we want to like split off five of them, like so, and then discard it. Obviously, I'm not gonna do it right now because it's spawned, but uh, yeah, no, anyways, let's give it a couple punches and get the heck out of here. We actually, this is actually one of the ones you do not want to walk too far on. Uh, so kind of with the Armstrong. I think we killed Armstrong, right? Yeah, you don't want to go too far away from Armstrong. Because... Who will this one get out here? Gonna do it? Okay, right, so this is why Leaping Pyric Burst. So he's gonna combine a jump with that out thing. If he targets someone who is too far away, he'll self-reset. So kind of similar to uh, Armstrong in that method that... Um, yeah, uh, let's kill this little guy. Oh, he might be self-resetting! Is he doing it? He self-reset! I oh, know he just got re- What? He could- Okay, no, that was just someone resetting him. That was someone just resetting. Oh, uh, Pirate Circle is in. Get in. Just the end. Yep. Oh, uh, left. Okay, we're spam our right. So we get even. We get. Yeah, that's why you don't want to get too far away from Hoppy. You do kinda need to pay attention to like him and Armstrong. Armstrong a little less because there's easier way to him, but I'll feel a little bit more. So he's sleeping again, hopefully not targeting someone who's far out. Our circle, go in. Oh no, left ball, I'm on the left, so oh, he's gonna die. We're good. We're good. No minions. Okay. Well, with that little distraction out of the way... <laughs> we can... We can do, uh... Do... Get back to end of all sales.
All right, pandemonium. Wrong button, by the way. That was uh, that was definitely the wrong button. My bad. Get away from people here. Okay. Why would they go right there? Okay, so tower is one person per, it's the bare minimum. Uh, first time he does it, you want to get away from where you just were. Because they're going to do a little circle underneath them. And then do it again after he does an ultima. I mustn't disappoint Lady Athena. time you want to get under them! You can, at least if I come around you can kind of remember what they were. I'm doing terrible right now. Stay where you All right. are. Yeah, you can kind of tell by some what they look like, which one you need to do. Uh, but anyway, kind of only meltdown is a tonal flying stack. Soul Grass is a tank stack. Usually one tank will uh, Whoever's main tanking it will just use their oh shit button to beat it. They don't deal with the uh, stacking. Tangling web. Goes in certain spots and then also under some party members. Click up some lines. Silk spit. And let's get away from people again. Uh, if you're too close and you have the lines between your between the party members, then it like um, puts that line between you. Anyways, once you see that, you can go ahead and get off to the side. Because, oh no, I'm a, I'm a mechanic ahead. My bad. All right, party plume, circle AOE. Find one at the end and then just jump over once it's safe. Stay where you are. Meltdown. There's a the tank stack. This time the tank's want to stack up. I am doing terrible again. Oh, what else the tank stack? I do worse when we're going to talk. Alright, Entangling Web, now we're going to where I was thinking before. I forgot he does that, the half arena. Okay, now he's gonna do a half arena. That gaze look where he pulls his head forward and looks one of the directions. You don't want to go until you see which way he's doing it. Otherwise, you're having to look it across the arena to get back into a good spot. All right, so touchdown. This is why you want to get out of the middle, since uh, goodbye middle platform. I believe, from what I know, Savage, you have to like split between the two sides, and it's yeah. All right, there's another Ultima. Now we're gonna switch to Okay, let's grab ourselves a tower. I think this is yes. Yeah, get out. Buttons. How do they work? Yeah, you can tell me looking at them, and I'm like, Stay where you are. Line stack with me. With meltdown. Harrowing hell. Kind of prepare yourself by going up to the front. Uh, when this first came out, there was people like, "Oh my gosh, don't run away! And run up to the front to the start because it's gonna do more damage." And it's like, no, this isn't proximity. It's just painful. It's a healer check. Anyways, at the end, that's why you want to get up close is because he does a knockback. Time again. Right, Let's get out of the middle. 
up for that first one. Oh, I was barely out of that one. Alright, Kate Power! You could not be in them unless <laughs> you're a tank. It will hurt! Now, someone does need to at least be in there, but so if, like, a tank is bad, and you probably want to be in there. If someone wants to be in there. Yeah, it's. Uh, my location. Uh, this looks like it's out. No, it was in. Oh no! I've forgotten what the two look like. Spit. I believe he's gonna do this half arena next, followed by. Uh, Touchdown again? Oh no, he just touched down that. But I think he's gonna die before he touches down. Yeah, okay, we saw a few less mechanics that time. But we did it. That was pandemonium. Well, we beat pandemonium, guys! There can't be anything else, right? We just literally beat pandemonium. It's fine. That was pandemonium. Nothing else can happen. Right? Oh, and obviously, yeah, if you go into those little like, green goops there, it's like. owie. Beautiful display, as always. So enchanted by your grace in battle. Arya, is that? Pandemonium's final gate has been cast wide. I shall await your arrival beyond. Sooner. This space is developed by some felt energy and we can't risk venturing through it before taking due precautions. Were my eyes mistaken? Was that Temis? Tell us what you know. We must consider our next course of action carefully. to have anticipated this. She bore witness to past events within Pandemonium. Athena would have found Elizabeth impossible to overlook. You possess such a talent for magics to say naught of the emissary's discerning judgment. And so she found a soul upon the sides of the ethereal sea and used his memories to craft a puppet that would serve her whims. But is what Temis said true? She imbued Pandemonium itself with a soul? Breathe life into that which should never live. Athena's research is fa fast approaching its culmination. Fortunately, with the information shared with us by your friends, we've made some strides towards figuring out how to stop her. A crystal called the Heart of Sabik may be the key. 
The researchers related a quick but thorough history of events leading to the present, uh, the sundering of the star, the merchants of the Asians, and the calamities that they brought to bear upon the realm. Tales that, under other circumstances, we would have found considered childish fantasy, if not for a name that rang true to La Habrea's memories. Artists to be, as you know, the secret of the Ultima Weapons Might, not at least the spell known as Ultima, and a source of enduring mystery. We are told that a general from the Garlean Empire was gifted his oversight by an Asian that the Ultima Weapon might be perfected. The identity of the shadow shadowy benefactor, however, remains a curious unknown. be a veritable trove of uncommon knowledge if there is aught you are withholding. Very well, at present the hardest to be itself is of greater moment. It's a creation of Athena's, made during the war her war with the words of Lahabrea. During her time with the words of Lahabrea, wow. Blech. This predates even Pandemonium's construction. She brought before us the crystal she claimed to have chanced upon, saying it contained immense power. She dubbed it Orisite, studying it with a fervor unusual even for her. The eventual fruit of her efforts was a Stygian crystal unlike aught we have ever seen, the heart of Sabiq. Uh, did Athena encounter Ultima the High Sarah for a chance? Unexpectedly specific question. I gather that the Heart of Sabiq is not the only Aura site in this era. Regardless, I know not of this high Seraph. Athena was never forthcoming as to how she found the crystal, though we can suspect that it was not of our star. Much later, we discover the Aura site magnifies the stars of those who come into contact with it. This would do much to explain Athena's actions following her recovery of the crystal. Alas, this realization came too late. By the time I moved to seal the aura site and its insidious influence away, I think this plot had already been laid. So what became of the heart of Sabiq? I took it from Athena's lab after ending after I ended her life. The density of the ether within was unlike anything I had ever had observed. I knew its capacity for destruction, but further analysis proved impossible. I elected to safeguard it myself. It is possible that Athena herself obscured the crystal's contents. Even were her memory stored within, I would have remained in ignorance. If she included some mechanism by which to give these memories form, as she did with her own, She would be reborn. Ironic that I should have protected those very memories in the name of Safeguarding the Star. Fate is low to see mistakes go unpunished. I think you choose something here. So yeah, that last option I'm pretty sure only appears if you've done the Evil East series. The Emissary's Judgment. I have told you all I know of Athena and the many secrets she kept hidden from the world. She indeed stored her memories within the heart of Sabiq. We must ask ourselves how they were awakened in this age. When was the crystal last sighted? Uh, during my fight with the ultimate weapon. In which she triumphed but failed to recover the heart. Yeah, according to your colleagues, there was another on the battlefield that day, in Asian. And the self saint Asian was later struck down at a location known as the Ethereal Chemical Research Facility. I've heard that name recently, said Professor Claudian's disappearance. Indeed, he's tracing an ethereal signature resembling that of the memory crystal in his possession. A signature that may well have belonged to the heart of Sabiq. 
In which case, it is no coincidence that Athena's awakening followed. But what reason would he have to bring her back to life? Was his mind not his own? Yet more questions without answers. Although Athena's essence is that of memory, her magics have not suffered for lack of a physical body. As the world is now, it should not be possible, and yet- and, but she must have found a suitable vessel. If Elidus is to be believed, she readies this vessel for godhood, and is perilously close. Perilously close to success. It beggars belief. As you well know, you were the linchpin for her ambition. Yours was the only form that could contain the immense power Athena required and has long since turned to dust. As pleasant as this discussion is, we require more information if we're to unravel this mystery. You know who awaits you, Arya. Temis. I fear you won't find him so cooperative as we're accustomed to. We know not how vast the space beyond these gates may be, but somewhere within lurks Athena, who with Elizabeth leashed at her side. This may be a simplistic theory, but hear me out. If Temis arose from his, with his, from his memories intact, he will be eager to see reason. We need only break the magics that bind him to regain our old ally. When I had fallen under he under Hephaestus' influence, you didn't stop trying until I was freed. I would ask that you do the same for Temis. Though none of us are real in the conventional sense, I feel it must be done. Temis would never have wished to be your enemy. <laughs> While Antonius' perspective is a sentimental one, Elizabeth may possess privileged knowledge. Question them unimpeded by magics would be ideal. Agdesis broke free of her bonds in her final moments, suggesting that Athena's hold weakens under the weight of combat. You might use the same principle to unshackle Elidibus's mind. But remember that our very nature is fragile. Even if he inhabits a vessel with which to meet you in battle, I am certain it is not meant to endure. If left weakened for too long, his aether may dissipate back into ethereal sea. You had best act quickly. Boss says the eleventh circle is now accessible. I suppose I have Athena to thank for this incarnation. I have long considered how I might stand against you, I admit. In transformation, I present to you my truth. I am in Lydia's. Just when you thought you were over the heels from the song. <laughs> I target the boss. My heart quivers in anticipation. All right, Tim is. So obviously we have faced off with Elizabeth before, but that was when he was the warrior of light. When light and light All right, so he's gonna do the divine, decisive ruling. Uh, when he does dark, it's gonna be followed by his in. When he does a light, it's going to be followed by an out. So here's the light. And device of ruling with a dark this time. And get my fist pump this 
stuck. Genomia, I think Genomia win? Yeah, we played. And... Submit to the emissary's judgment! He's gonna do an arena light start split. Case and pillars will be in one circle. DPS will be in the other. And you wanna go in the opposite one. Because you need to regain your uh, balance or whatever between light and dark. Will you be judged worthy to exist? Emissaries will, I think, miss this so long as you're in the right circle. If you leave your circle, you start These taking damage. Pop arms length and just be in. Again, dark is in. Light is out. So we'll let him knock me back this time. Alright, dual buster with Dyke. Again, so same situation as last time. There's a slight melee hate in that you can't get to the sides here. Will light embrace or darkness consume? All right, so he's actually gonna do knockback this time around with over in these circles. Will you be just Okay, so gigantic tank cluster, but this is with dark. So the tank actually did the smart thing and did not run too far away. Because we have to get under tennis here after we do that. This is gonna be it out, actually. So this is a multi-hit stack. Okay. I am the emissary. Dark and light, we're doing the split again. Like day one, tanks were just like running way away, and then we realized it was sneaking. And it was like, oh no, get back here! You know me. Oh. Warriors forged in my own image. Oh no! There was another mechanic coming. 
He was gonna do like dashes with the in and out. If I remember, I think that's what Shadow Messengers is. I think. I ripped that mechanic. fog has lifted. I knew Athea's magic magnified the desires of their victim at the expense of aught else, but I never guessed what desire of mine she could exploit. Since the moment we met, I have made plain my interest in you. My desire to understand your nature. I suppose that curiosity extended to how each of us would fare in a match of strength. What is this? Free, then I am no longer needed. Do not let Crest fall on my friend. These few moments of clarity are more than I could have asked for. You must render judgment on Athena's actions. You've grasped the fraying strands of my being and tied them together with your own. Nevertheless, I fear that I'm here on borrowed time. I can only hope that I can see you through the last of our battles. Until then, I will cherish every moment. I am Elizabeth, the emissary. As such, it falls upon me to judge Athena, who would disrupt her carefully maintained balance to fulfill her own desires, where I shall not waver in this duty. Let's return to Eric Tonios and Lahabra. There is much I would share with you before we embark upon our final ascent. It's good to see you. I knew Arya would guide you to our side once again. I am grateful she had the patience to tolerate my lapse in manners. Athena's hold upon me is broken. I pledge every moment to my, of my remaining time to seeing that she answers for her deeds. Very good. To that end, I would have you share what you know of her plan. Of course, as I mentioned, Athena possesses a vessel that may serve in the creation of a god. It is someone Arya knows well, a man by the name of Claudian. But the twist of, by a twist of fate, his body proved to be ideal for Athena's purpose. The creation of a person requires not just body, soul, or memory, but rather all three. 
We're made from the memories of our ancient counterparts, etched upon drifting souls and given form through the infusion of ether. We lack a physical body, yet you can see and feel us all the same. Athena is different. She's carved her memories into Claudian's soul while it was still within its body and thus made both her own. Viv and she is prone to air. After the sundering, things became more fragile in both body and soul, and this difference prevents Athena from realizing the full extent of her desires. So that's why she has turned her sights toward Arya. Her uncommon strength rivals even the mightiest of our age. By scrutinizing her feats in battle, Athena aims to deduce the secret of Arya's prowess and use, the for use it to fortify her own vessel. Only then will the culmination of her research be at hand. And we simply remove Athena's memories from Claudian's body. An arduous task, but not impossible. Athena can inscribe herself upon another soul, but she cannot erase its will. We awaken Claudian's spirit's reality of his bondage. He might be compelled to wrest his body from Athena's clutches. We still don't know why she chose Claudian. What makes him more suited than anyone else? Although I have never spoken to Claudian, I did witness an incident that may prove revelatory. When instructing the vessel to do her bidding, she called it by a familiar name, Erectonius. What? Why would she- It is as I thought. Excuse me. As I thought. Burp. A mother's touch. In and out of the cutscene. In and out. In and out. Temis, you may have just handed us the key to rescuing Claudia. What must we do? First and foremost, we must confront Athena. She must be made vulnerable, as Elizabeth was. Yet yeah, our opponent stands on the verge of godhood. As we are now, she would unmake us in an instant. Arya, we have no choice but to place the burden of our fate, and the fate of many more besides, squarely upon your shoulder. I trust you have no objections. Wouldn't it be the first time? Ugh. Objections, no. Concerns, yes. No, we not we know not what form Athena will take. I have faith that your skill will see us through this trial as it has many times before. And we all appreciate Arya's willingness to fling herself at the Adnan. However, we have yet to hear how this will liberate Claudian. I have a plan. Do not trouble yourself over the details. Same goes for you, Arya. You must focus the entirety of your attention on Athena. She will not be easily bested, even by one of your prowess. And less trust in Lahabra. Prepare for the battle to come. Her face Athena, I must know. If she ne had never discovered the Orsite, had never fallen under its influence, would she have lived a normal life? Would she have been a mother to me? I've asked myself the same questions. Questions with no answer, I fear. But let's put them out of our mind. There is something we must discuss. I would do so not as La Habrea, but as a father to his son. Anabasia's The Twelfth Circle is now accessible.
You have done well to reach the seat of godhood. Now, bear your souls to me. Stuck in my head. And we're not gonna go 
the glitch right now. I probably should have flipped out enough time. I forget how long this little open blade is. And it's at This is a, like, moving everywhere, because there's AoEs flying, she's flying everywhere, and, yeah. Alright, once she's done with all that, get to north or south, because... That's not the order of my blitz. What else is new? Alright, Super Chain Theory from Hell. So the donut one is way over there. Kane's gonna move her place soon. Alright, she's also gonna Parthenos. This got so many people on day one. Actually, there was a time when I was trying to do this. Uh, someone, uh, one of the healers decided, like, I'm gonna rescue you in, even though I'm over here, like, trying to avoid Parthenos, and they just, like, rescued me over to the donut, and I'm like, no. I got out of it before the <laughs> Parthenos went off, they all got smacked by it, and I'm here like, blah, 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 I didn't get hit, why did you rescue me into that? Like, what the heck? Not cool. I know what I'm doing, okay? Orchestrians from Mayhem Rage are so rare. There's donuts in the sky. Uh, I have to raise before I can. Yeah, I got it! I also got the minion. Cool. Well, let's go. Let's get out of here. I don't need the gear. 